win on the weekend. What's that done to the, the psyche of the group or the, the feeling around the place? I think it's um, validation that if we we play consistent four quarters, it uh, it can look pretty good. So it gives uh, it confirms the players' belief in themselves, uh, and obviously that's a good thing. But it also reinforces the need to be on for longer periods and. Um, you know, whether it's Richmond or, or Brisbane this week, understanding that, uh, you know, we keep saying it, it is the old cliche around anyone can pull you apart in this even competition, and uh, we've felt that. So uh, it, is a, um, it is some validation, but it also uh, puts us sort of on notice that that's what we need to do um, week in, week out, to give ourselves the best chance possible. And the Lions present a pretty big challenge. Yeah, they do. Uh, they've been... Impressive in their five wins, and um, they've been consistent for a little while now without winning as many games last year. We knew that they were ultra competitive, and you know, a year older and a, and a year on, uh, it's, it seems to be coming together. So they'll they'll come down here you know, with a head of steam and a bit of confidence. So we'll uh, we're aware of that, and uh, and as I said, we'll need, need to have our edge. To the sort of uh, last week's performance, a bit frustrating, I guess, um, in a sense that the. the the difference between your best and your worst already this year is there's quite a big gap between you. And the challenge, I guess, would now just try and shrink that gap for the rest of the season. Yeah, well, I mean, whether the emotion uh, is frustration, you're probably right at times, but we've got to keep looking forward. And mm. if we keep, uh, if we, the rear vision mirror, um, you know, is, is too prevalent, then you, you, it becomes a bit overwhelming that. Mm. That, uh, that emotion. So you, you've got to continue to dwell on some of the good things that uh, we've been doing, even in the games that we've lost. And, um, and, remo- and again, re- reinforce that during the week and, and make sure that the players understand that we, we really believe in them um, and that we're not frustrated with them. We're, um, we're, on a, we're always on a journey, but we're, as this thing um, changes and evolves from week to week now and our team uh, grows more and more aware of um, the needs, you know, as far as uh, contributing for each other, then, then we just believe we'll become better and better. So, uh, you know, to back up on, uh, on a pretty, pretty good performance last week is, um, is our mandate this week. I guess um, looking at last week, is it with Brisbane? I guess, that, I mean, in particular, inside 50s and contested ball. Right off the charts against the Swans, and it's another cliche, the midfield battle. But is that sort of more stark this week than probably most weeks? Yeah, it is always important that mm. <coughs> that midfield grind and who wins the day there. They've uh, they've been pretty consistent in there with their key contributors and and what they can do um, and how product productive they can be. It was a wet game last week mm. up there, and that um, that draws probably a few more contests, you know, in that phone box and. Uh, and they're strong in there, so, but we, we're more than capable. I, I think you know, our, our mids have learnt you know, over recent times how even we need to be through there, and we've had um, enough spread of contributors um, without winning enough games yet. So, uh, yeah, that'll be an intriguing battle because uh, both, both midfields are uh, you know, more than capable and I think are at the upper end of the competition when they're at their best, so hopefully our boys... Um, we get their absolute best. Yeah, what have you had to say, or have you said anything to Aaron Norton about his rise and, and the hype around him and, and managing the perhaps renewed expectations around him? Yeah, I, I th- you trying to hope a bit that um, that Aaron can manage that himself. He, he his teammates, um, and uh, I mean, it's, it's not you can't go up to a player and say, "Hey, mate, you had a good day." Um, there's every chance it might go south this week, you know. Um, all you do is uh, remind Aaron that um, of the important things that enabled him to play well. Yes, he's, and he's grateful for his teammates, you know, to be able to play uh, the brand of footy we we did. We gave him some opportunity, but as I said after the game, he created some things out of nothing as well. So the you know the core of his existence as an AFL player and 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 what the the trunk of um, his performance is, he'll. I've got no doubt he'll focus on it and he'll apply himself and um, it would be great to think it would turn out something like it did on, uh, on Saturday night last week. But, uh, but if it doesn't, then, uh, 
we still need you know an evenness. We need other contributors, and and I'm sure that um, that Aaron's team and selfless uh, approach to the game, team oriented approach to the game will uh, will come out. So, uh, but yeah, he's a 19 year old um, who has played a couple of really um, promising games as a, as a key forward, and others he's battled away. And when we haven't played so well as a team, um, the more we can play. Um, in the fashion we, we did on the weekend, the better chance we're going to give him. We're playing at Mars Stadium this week. Obviously, you're becoming more and more familiar with the ground. Is it somewhat of an advantage, the fact that Brisbane isn't as knowledgeable? Uh, not sure. I think they're going to have a, a training run out there tomorrow afternoon. And oh, our record down there is not uh, as flash as we'd like yet. Um, Put that down to a number of things. We we enjoy going and playing in Ballarat, and we love the ground. The surface is is unbelievable. The grounds, uh, the greenskeepers, the groundsmen, and women do an amazing job uh, down there. I'm assuming there's some girls on the uh, <laughs> ground staff, but um, so we and, and I think you know the it should be good conditions. Um, the time slots would be better than uh, <laughs> one of the ones last year. But we're looking forward to it, and, and in, in many ways, as much as it's our home game, we, we treat it as uh, a bit of a retreat and an interstate type approach. And we go down the night before and uh, get involved in the local economy and uh, spend some time um, in the region. And, and yeah, we, we look forward to it. So we, we'd like to think that we can uh, we can play better than we have um, in recent times and really really give one of our best performances, which we haven't really done yet. Do it's you, only 13 degrees on a Saturday. Yeah, do you think that? that I mean, yeah, yeah. You know, you're playing a team from Queensland, not used to that sort of conditions. Do you think that could actually be an advantage for you guys? Ah, uh, don't know. Yeah. Maybe, maybe they're keen to get away from some of the warmer weather. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I know Fags takes them down to Tasmania on their training camps and things like that, just to uh, so they can get some good training blocks in away from the heat and and other stimulus. But uh, no, I don't think it. Don't think it's really going to matter. Um, yeah, uh, so I don't think either team will have an advantage in regards to the uh, the weather conditions. Bevo, I was just going to ask you, have you got or sought reassurance from the AFL on logistics surrounding the game? I mean, transport and lighting are two things that, that spring to mind, obviously, like you say, different times, but, yeah. uh, you know, same ground, more people, obviously, yeah. expected. Uh, no, I haven't personally. Um, I'm sure... You know, there's some assurance going to be on the sense. I think with the one o'clock game, the lighting, you'd hope it should be all right. You'd hope, um, you know, we wouldn't um, we wouldn't need uh, need lights. Even sometimes we get a bit precious. It gets a bit dim, and we we we're putting the lights on. I'm pretty sure we can still see the Sharon, and that's the main thing. So I don't, I don't think we're going to need lights. Yeah, I mean, it, the, it should be all right. I suppose the the traffic in and out, some, uh, but uh, it's probably not the at the foremost uh, of, my, of my headaches at the moment. Does, does Sapling come straight in, or is it that you sort of um, hesitant to make changes to such, after such a great win? No, he'll come in. Yep. Yeah, he'll come in. Uh, he's um, he's pretty right. He's a uh, return to play uh, program. Always prepares our players pretty well. He's just got a train today, and and we're pretty sure he'll be fine. So he'll come in. So there'll be at, one, at least one change. Mm. Um, can't tell you exactly what it will be at the moment. Yeah. And just back on um, Norton, I guess this week he's got a pretty, um, it sounds like he'll have a pretty <coughs> decent um, opponent in Harris Andrews, I think he's right to go. Is that sort of, a, a, I guess, a nice sort of challenge to the backup, back up such a huge performance last week for him? Yeah, maybe. I mean, he's getting all different types mm. and he's had um, some players like, you know, Liam Jones has played well on him against Carlton, uh, when we played Carlton and um, the Fremantle um, key defenders were, were pretty strong, but I think it, it does get back to how we play and help him as well. And what he did well last week um, is he got the ball in all different areas of the ground. I mean, Aaron needs to, he's, he's, he can run, uh, he'll get up the ground at times, he'll be an outlet for us, and, and then we'll get him uh, on the post runs and we'll get him coming up at the ball. And you know, it's interestingly enough, he's probably mishandled the, the hit up, the leading. Uh, marks rather than the, the big contested marks. So if you can make the easy easy and uh, keep taking the hard ones, he'll he'll uh, will really benefit from him. So yeah, if look if Har whether it's Harris Andrews or Gardner or whoever it may be, I'm sure there's there's no uh, 
there's no battling key defenders really in the competition, so they're going to try and make his life hard. Uh, we've got to work together. You know, I felt our forwards really helped him last week as well. Uh, Billy Gowers and others played sacrificial roles at times, and having a cohesive forward mix is as important as uh, that one individual down there who's who can take a grab, a big grab. You mentioned they'll be making his life hard. If they try the tactic of physically trying to get under his skin, are you you're confident that 19 years of age, he can, he can handle it? Yeah, I think so. I mean, there's only so much you can get away with. Uh, and uh, there's no doubt that forwards become frustrated with uh, key defensive tactics and being held on to from behind and things like that. And it's just, I'm sure the... Uh, the umpires will pick things like that up and you just pay one early and, and it stops it. So uh, um, but he'll be fine. I mean, he's, he's got a great temperament and um, and even as a 19-year-old, he's big and strong and, and we're sh- sure he'll handle himself all right. Yeah. Just wanted to ask you, yeah. I noticed uh, Fox Footy was reporting um, about five Victorian clubs circling around uh, Ed Langdon. He's out of contract at the end of this year. Are you guys in the market for a 23-year-old... Uh, Winger yeah. slash line breaker. Yeah, look, I, I'd love to be able to talk about list management and uh, what Sammy Powers is doing behind the scenes, but it's that's probably something I'll never talk about. Ed's a good player, and um, I'm sure you know, like some of our players are out of contract. We're under no illusions that uh, there's been overtures from other clubs. It's just part of the competition and the uh, and the free market that uh, that's that it is now, whether it's free agency or not. Players are so mobile that uh, it's critical that you've got a great working environment. Players want to want to be here for the right reasons, and that's what we try to establish and maintain. And um, we believe we're in a good space with that. Um, who knows what will happen with with young Ed? I'm sure he'll probably stay at Fremantle. Thanks, guys.